Please welcome in now BYU baseball head coach Trent Pratt to the Locked On Cougars podcast. And coach, uh, first off, thank you for joining us. And I also wanted to just uh, start off here. Uh, season is about to get underway for you. What is your excitement level as you get ready for another baseball season? Um, it works. Always excited. Opening. There's nothing like opening day, opening season. Um, and man, we're kind of sick of playing each other. We're ready to see a team with another jersey and some new faces out there. That is a common refrain I hear from every sport I go and cover is that football, you get into training camp. It's like, ah, we're, we're sick of hitting each other, so let's get to the season. But that's I think that's the simple fact. You guys have been getting ready for this for quite some time. Uh, before we talk about the Big 12 and the season ahead, I wanted to look back just for a minute. Uh, what were your overall takeaways from last season, your final season in the West Coast Conference, yeah. and what, what you guys learned about your team? Yeah, um, last year's team – Man, we had, we had, we, ran some, we, ran, we ran into a rash of injuries um, on the mound and in the field, and we had some guys step offensively. We were really good. Um, we had some injuries on the mound that we just we couldn't overcome, um, depth wise. And so that's one thing that was a big emphasis on this year is, man, we need more depth on the pitching side. Um, you can never have enough pitching. It seems like our happiness depends on you know how many you know how our pitching does, and you know keeping teams not scoring very many runs. So. Um, that's one thing we learned about last year's team going to this year is we need more depth on the mound. We need more guys. And and that was a – we feel like we have addressed that going into this year. Um, there'll be a lot of new faces. We lost some big offensive keys last year with, you know, Austin Deming and All-American and and Cole Gamble and some guys that, man, the, you know, they're hard to replace. Now, I, I remember talking with Coach Littlewood. This goes back two or three years, and he made a similar comment. He said, you can never have enough pitching depth in college baseball. It's always at a premium because the top arms, A, get uh, drafted right out of high school. B, if, you want, if you're if you an elite program, well, guess what? You're going to have the leg up on that. How big has the Big 12 affiliation for you at BYU Baseball been in terms of, as you mentioned, attracting more pitching depth and talent? Yeah, it, it's been good. And, and we've done a good job with some of the kids we had last year developing them, and they're better this year. Um, so that's our job too, is, Hey, we got to get kids. And then man, our money's you made on developing them, getting them here and getting our program and getting them a lot better. And we've had a lot of success in that in the past. And, you know, we expect that to carry over. Now you looking ahead to this season, you guys open it up. You're going down to Arizona playing as part of this MLB desert invitational. Uh, how exciting is this? Cause it's got some high level competition for you guys right out of the gate. Yeah. Right out of the gate. We play USC, which man kind of probably should have been a regional last year. Kind of got the shaft a little bit. And then Ohio State and Grand Canyon, which, you know, he's been really good. It's, it's funny. All three of those head coaches, man, are, are friends. Um, I, I've known Nancy Stankiewicz through a long time. I, Coach Moziello, Ohio State, actually played for on the Cape for a summer. And so, man, it's it's cool to play against, you know, good friends. But I know I know how those guys coach, and I know those teams will be really good. And, man, it's a good challenge for us. How cool is it you guys get to go down to these spring training sites, get inside? They're not – MLB parks per se, but they are MLB affiliated uh, parks down there with spring training sites. How cool is that to be down there in that area with all this going on? Oh, it's awesome for our guys. Like those fields are nice. They're manicured, you know, um, it's awesome for our guys to get and play in that, in, in that stadium and, and know you know, a lot of big guys are down there right now working out. So I'm sure we'll see them around and just to get outside in good weather on great fields is man, that's, that's why we wanted to get into this tournament and we're thankful for them for letting us in. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, you guys are obviously going to have a, a really, really tough slate of games. I, the West Coast Conference, and I, I watched my fair share of you guys of the, of the BYU mm -hmm. baseball over the past couple of years when they were in the West Coast Conference, and it was always a high level of high level baseball. But the Big 12 feels like, in similar to all these other sports for BYU athletics, it's the next step up in competition. Uh, is it? Are, are you seeing it from that perspective as well? Yeah, you know, lucky enough, I you know I I played in the Pac-10 when I played, and I played in the SEC. And so, just like football basketball, it's depth. Um, I think those top line guys in the West Coast Conference could probably play, you know, in most Big 12 schools. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, the guys, hey, your eighth, ninth got pitching guy on, you know, on the staff, you know, the guys at the bottom or your couple guys off of the bench, you know, those guys, you know, getting those guys better and finding better players in those spots will kind of be the key because those teams will be deep. Um, they've been doing, recruiting in the Big 12 for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and we just kind of started last year. And so I think it's the same thing that all the sports have gone through. Like, I think our top line players could play anywhere. It's just getting enough depth. So if you do have an injury or something happens, another guy can step in. 
Now, I just want to talk to you a little bit about your team overall. You talk about you felt like the depth has developed with guys some continuity from last year's squad. I want to talk about more about your field players as a whole. You guys <laughs> lost some talent from last season, but you do retain some as well. How are you feeling? I just generally about the overall talent base in your field players. No, we like our guys. Um, it's good, you know, having Cooper Vest back, having Luke Anderson back. That man, those guys had a chance to play a lot um, and have experience in. We brought in um, Crew Robinson that has played last year's at UCSD. So another guy that, man, has been a successful program and and nothing's really going to surprise him. And the other guys, are, that's like we like them. They're talented. It's just like you and I talked. Oh, I'm not moving around enough. <laughs> um, um, just they're good players. They just have they haven't they don't have a lot of experience. Haven't done it yet. And so it's going to be a baptism by fire. We're going to find out right away where we're at and what the three teams are playing. <clears throat> and it's great. We have Colin Ruder back that was hurt all last year, um, our catcher. And and that that's a big piece to have back with him. Well, I was going to ask you about Colin because he was a guy I remember reading on him. And there was some thought that he was going to be a big, big piece for BYU baseball. Mm-hmm. And then you lose him to injury. You talked about the injuries earlier on in this interview. But how, how big of an impact can a guy like that make for you? It's a big impact. I mean, he's he's a physical kid, power bat. He catches the ball really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's a freshman his freshman fall, he was one of our best players. He started the year and we hit him fourth and we maybe put a little pressure on him as a freshman. He struggled a little bit early, but he had a sit for last year with an arm injury and now he's back. And so I think that maturity of sitting and watching and not coming back is, is really going to help our team. Cooper Vest, uh, you mentioned that he played a lot last year. Where has he made the most strides in your mind? Um, just being a leader. I think last year we had some older guys and, and Coop's done a great job of stepping up and and kind of leading by example with this team. I mean, he does everything right. He works hard. He comes every day. He plays hard. And you have a couple guys like that, him and Luke Anderson, and guys kind of fall in line. That's that's You want to build a team around those guys. Um, they're great personalities. They love being here. They work like crazy. And that's been a big uptick in this team is seeing, man, how much guys love. There's someone here all the time. I'm usually early. Guys are rolling in. We leave late. There's guys that are still here. And so we know they're putting in the work and, and getting better. Do you, have you set what your rotation is going to be pitching wise? Can you lay that out for me? Yeah, um, we're running with you know, Ben Hansen started for us last year. He'll start game one, and then Cutter Clausen has been really good the last little while. He start game two, and we have a freshman in Casey Bell um, that will start game three. That man has been fastballs electric, and man, he, he's been really good this fall and when, since we've been back from the break. Now, in terms of names, uh, I, I'm a big name person, and Cutter Clausen, that name always stands out. He's a guy who's been around the program for quite some time now. Uh, mm-hmm. What, where has he changed the most as a pitcher coming into this season? Man, he he's made a big adjustment um, from last year, and sometimes coming back off a mission, it it takes guys a little time, especially pitchers. It's that arm feels great one day, you haven't thrown for two years, it yeah. you feel like it's awesome, then it hurts, you know, the next day or. But the biggest thing he's done, just his mentality on the mound, and and he's thrown a ton of strikes. That may have been Cutter's thing at times in the past where he might have the best stuff on our team. It just – there wasn't enough balls in the strike zone. Yeah. And this, his last outing, four or five outings against us has been – man, he fills up the strike zone, and he just his mentality on the mound has been has been a game changer. And our players notice it. They're like, dude, this is different. What, what got into him? I'm like, I don't know. Find out because we all need to do the same thing. <laughs> We, we need we need more of the, what he's got right now, right? That's, uh, that's 100%, yeah. Uh, is there anybody else that I haven't brought up today that you're thinking might be a guy that BYU baseball fans want to keep an eye on? I know that it's hard to predict because baseball is such a, a unique sport in that way, but yeah. is there somebody that's been standing out in workouts and offseason that you think would be a, a star in the making in a way? Yeah, we have we have two guys on the offensive side that we haven't talked about, like in, in Breaker Herdsman. Um, he came from Utah Tech. He's an unbelievable athlete, and um, and Easton Jones will start at third base for us to start. And I think he's hit seven, eight home runs this fall, and and then in the, you know since we're back from the break. Then on the mound, we haven't talked about Boston Mavis, who was our closer last year, that was lights out, and he's he's been great. And some other arms coming in, um, Stone Cushing towards the end of the game, you know, and people remember Mason Olson from last year that was was a starter, kind of because we had to move him into that role with some injuries, and now he's back in the bullpen, and can kind of do everything for us. Um, he, he could start, he could mid-relief, he could close. So having pieces like that, you know, in the bullpen is going to be key for us. Now, Coach, uh, I work for a network of, of different podcasts, and I, there's a bunch of Big 12 schools that are uh, on our network. And I can tell you that TCU, Oklahoma, 
and I think it's Oklahoma State. Their hosts have uh, sent me pictures at different points over the past year or two since BYU was announced they're going to the Big 12 Conference saying, Jake, is this a legit backdrop of, of, of Miller, <laughs> Miller Park? And I'm like, yes, it's absolutely 100% legit. you got the mountains in the backdrop. It's absolutely incredible. And to a man, every single one of them said, I've got to get to BYU to see this for myself in person. I think that kind of speaks to uh, the unique nature of what, how Miller Park is situated there on campus and just the overall ambiance of it. Can you speak a little bit to how cool it is to have that as your guys' home venue? Man, it's awesome. I think sometimes we take it for granted because we're there every day. Um, sometimes if you sit up in the stands, I'll, I'll go up in the press box sometimes, sit there and just, you know, just to chill out and, you know, regroup. And it's like, Man, it's it's a pretty cool place. Yeah. Um, it's pretty special, and and like and everyone noticed it. We talked to recruits. I think that's how recruits first kind of hear about baby baseball is seeing stuff on on social media about about the field. We break his in. It's like I don't know much about it. I just I know the field's awesome. You know that's kind of the first call we make. I don't know much about BYU, but the field looks cool on you know on social media on Instagram. I got to move around more, Jake. <laughs> that light um, keeps just shutting off on you. <laughs> yeah. So so it's a great recruiting it's a great recruiting tool for us as well. Because people know about BYU baseball through that, you know, kids are on social media all the time, mm -hmm. and so man, it works out good for us. But I'm excited; those guys are excited to come. Now, uh, last thing for me: is there anything that you'd like to pass along to Cougar Nation and BYU fans just about the season upcoming? Uh, what what you're feeling about this team, et cetera? Yeah, I love this team. Um, it's a joy to come to Parker Day and coach them, and, and they're going to, you know, guys that come in, the guys who go out, and they're going to play hard. They want to win like crazy. Um, they're not happy with what people think about us. They have a kind of a chip on their shoulder, which is great. That's what we want. And so I think that's the biggest thing is know this group, man, they're excited to play and they're hungry and, and they're going to go out there and, and they're going to make Cougar Nation proud. Well, when you're picked to finish uh, uh, second, well, not second last, you're tied for last place in the preseason poll. I guess there's nowhere to go but up, right? Exactly. All right. Well, Coach, I appreciate you carving out some time for us here on the podcast. Look forward to tracking you throughout the upcoming season. Best of luck down there in Arizona. All right. Thanks, Jake. I appreciate it.